he about you? He's no respecter of person. What he did for one, he'll do for another. He healed one, he'll heal you. He delivered one, he'll deliver you. He gave one peace, he'll give you peace. Rely on God. Rely on that Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. And as Pastor Campbell comes forth, I want to invite you to our Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry family 10th anniversary. We're celebrating it in May, the last Sunday of the month of May, May 28th. We invite you to come on in, in person or via Facebook, social media. We invite you to come on in and celebrate 10 years of ministry here at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries. God has truly blessed us. We've got testimony on top of testimony on top of testimony how God has blessed this ministry and how we have been blessed to bless others. So we want you to celebrate with us. Nothing wrong with celebrate, right? Hallelujah. So we invite you to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry, May 28th, this year, last Sunday in May. Come on out and celebrate with us. I guarantee you, You'll have a blessed time in the Lord. Yeah. At this time, we're going to ask Pastor Campbell to come forth and bring a mighty word from God from the throne room to be a blessing to you. God's got an on-time word for you on today, and I know deliverance will take place in your household if you just stay tuned and hear what God has to say. Amen. Amen. Pastor Campbell, come on up here. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> if I can't do it, Brother Jeff, I'm going to call on you. <laughs> he didn't bring his glasses. <laughs> if he says that we got a ram in the bush, <laughs> so you're going to be that ram in the bush today, bro. <laughs> amen, amen. Go ahead and take out your cell phones. Go ahead and take out your cell phones. I didn't get to, actually, I didn't set mine today to text somebody so I'm going to do it a little different and God has laid something on my heart anyway uh, he gave me a name and an individual to pray for mm -hmm. so watch this and I asked my wife I said without thinking without even without even a thought give me what God gave me what is he telling me right now and she said heal me so and that's and actually that's what he had given me so it was right on time so I wanted just confirmation into what, what God was saying and doing for us in, in this season. I hear them words out. I do so. The words enjoying the word already. Amen. They, they, they enjoy praise and worship. Now they enjoy, they want to hear the word. They, they, they got some little uh, fawnings or whatever they call them, the little birds in the nest. That's all. Chicks. 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 Amen. <laughs> my great niece is who God placed on my heart. Amen. Ramaya. And I called my sister this morning. I said, can you have her watching this so we can pray with her and for her? Amen. And whatever... And when we say healing, we want you to realize that not necessarily that is healing from sickness. Right, right, right. right. It can be healing from any healing from from feeling that you're not loved, that you're not wanted, that you're not cared for, that you're not wanted. Healing from any healing that your mom, your dad is not there, and you're not you're not being treated like you used to be. Healing. And we, and of course, we do want healing from in your body also to take place. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Heavenly Father, as you can place my great niece Ramaya on my heart and in my mind, Lord, I pray for the healing that needs to take place from you in her, Lord God. We ask that you touch her right now, Father God. Mm -hmm. As I pray, as I reach out to you, Lord God, and I ask that, that your hand 
touches and rests them on her, Father God. And release those. Hold them on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, as we're watching this live stream, if you have a sister, if you have a niece, if you have a cousin, we want you to grab them right now as a way. We want you to grab them and join in on this prayer. Because not only remind, but I feel in my spirit also that young women, young girls, little girls are under attack right now. And it's still part of our our family word. So we want to we want to put a hedge of protection around them. We want to pray for them right now. We want we want God to keep them safe and sound. And we already know you already know about human trafficking. We want to make sure that they're safe from that as well. That no evil entity will come into their house or into their room or as they were walking, as they were doing the things that, that they do as young kids. No one will sneak up on them and, and attack them and bother them. Lord, this is my prayer. This is my, my prayer that I stand in the gap for these young women yes. for now. That you release them in, in their wonder years, Lord God. That you will bring joy to them, Lord God. And that, that you will give them peace of mind. And, and let them know their self-worth, Lord God. That it's you, Lord God, that they need to seek, Lord God. They don't need to seek any admiration from any man or any boy, Father God. But as, as, they, as they wait, as they walk, as they talk, Lord God, let you infuse them with your spirit, Lord God. That you come among, upon them, Lord God, and, and reveal that hidden thing that they're looking for, Lord God. That you will comfort them in, in the times of need, Lord God. That you will do it, Lord God. That you will, will heal them now, Father God, as, as we pray for them, as we stand in the gap for them, Lord God. As we pour out, as we cry out to you, Lord God, and that you in turn pour into them, Lord let no harm come to our little girls. Let no enemy come nigh to them, Lord God. Let them enjoy their youth, Lord God. Let them enjoy their tender age. Lord God, we ask that you keep them safe. That you heal them, Father God, when they're broken, Lord God. That you would touch their most inner being, Lord Release the joy in their hearts now. Now, Father God, as we go further and do this service, Lord, we ask that you touch those that we reach out to by a text message, Lord God. That let them know that we're praying with them and for them, Lord God, and that they have someone that they can call and talk to at Top of Mount Christian Ministries, Lord God. That we're here for them, that we're interceding for them. And that as long as you ask us to pray for them, it's, it's our guarantee that we will pray with you and for you. Lord, decrease me. Let me die the flesh, Lord God, and, and let your spirit reign forevermore in me. Yes, Lord. The words that you place in my mouth, Lord God, let it be challenging to the spirit and to the soul, Lord that it would challenge people where they are and where, to help them get to where they need to be. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, and thank you Lord God. Yeah, we have to get that out. God was impressing this upon my spirit and my soul. Is that our young girls, girls, young women, babies needed it. Jesus' name. If, if you have your Bibles, go to Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14. I feel as if I have a great word from God. I always feel that way because He gives it to me. Each Sunday I say, hey, Man, this word is sure going to be good. Amen. Anytime God gives it to us, it should be good. Amen. It should be good. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 14. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, but throughout this message, we're going to go over other scriptures, and um, I'll come back and there's more scriptures and judges that we will talk about, just to set up, set down the foundation of what we're doing today. 
I, I'm not going to preach like I normally preach. I, I have not been preaching like I normally been preaching. Today I'm going to give you a, 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 a narrative message. And for those that's asking what is a narrative message, it's a story. I'm going to give you a story today. And, and by, the, by the chapter that I just gave you, if you look, you can tell the story, who we're going to talk about in this story, and some of the things that we're going to talk about in this story today. And you never know, God has probably changed me from giving you the narrative story to go ahead and preach and teach the word, Pastor Campbell. So we're going to go with what the Spirit of God has for us to go with today. So the message will, will be uh, wrapped around a story. And today, I, I might not, I don't know, have points for you to write down. But what I need for you to do is that as you listen to the story, as you listen to the interaction that I have with you and, and talk back to me Sunday, I need for you to really listen. So because there's going to be times that it's things that you will need to write down. It's not nothing I'll probably tell you to do, but I need for you to have your pens and paper ready because there shall be something God needs to place into your heart today. Something that he needs to release to us today because it's something that's missing in us. So I'm praying that God gives you, the Spirit of the Lord gives you something today so that you can write it down. Because Spirit tells us, brother, there's something important. Spirit is always going to tell us something important. So I want you to focus on the Spirit of the Lord today mm -hmm. as we move forward into this. And, and as you've got the book of Judges, stand to your feet so I know that we're on one accord so we can go ahead and get going. Judges chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Now Samson went down to Timnah. And saw a woman in Timnah, and the daughter of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as a wife. Verse number three. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman amongst the daughters of your brethren? Or amongst all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines. Verse number four. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> so just starting off, just listening to the, to the scriptures. I'm sure God has already released something because I already see one right and I see two right. He, he has released something for. So let me tell you this in Romans chapter eight, verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. Put your hand on your heart and, and tell yourself that I have purpose. I have, I purpose. have purpose. Now you're going to need to tell yourself like you mean it, that you have purpose. I have, I have purpose. I, I know we got women in here and women, I know that, that you can say it a little sassy and that you can release that a little sassy. So I need for you to say it like that the sass that's inside of you, that you have purpose. I have, I have purpose. purpose. So why I need for you to understand that, why I wanted you to say that, because what I need to tell you today also is that you got to understand that not only do you have purpose, but a lot of people are in danger of aborting their destiny. So I first wanted you to let you know that you have purpose so that you can understand how important you are to you. And then I have to come and let you know that a lot of us and a lot of people today are in danger of aborting, aborting their destiny. And let me give you the subject title right now. Don't disqualify yourself from your destiny. So 
I want you to know that it's important to you to understand that you can make some decisions and that you can make some choices that will cause you to miss out on what God has for you. That's true. That's true. It's important for us to understand that we can disqualify ourselves from moving into what God has destined for us in our lives. And as we go on with this narrative uh, of teaching and as this, this narrative message, we're going to understand and we're going to see a man that had destiny and purpose in his life cut it short. Because he did things that, that disqualified him from further in his destiny. I don't, I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I get everything God has in store for me. I don't want to miss out on nothing that God has for me. And, and we've seen it in time and time again. We've said it here in this ministry that you'll want hallelujah, hallelujah away from receiving your blessings from God. And what that means is that any little thing, any little thing that makes you upset you, you're going to leave before God had an opportunity to take you into the destiny that he had purpose for you. And I'm not just saying here because at the top of the mountain, but what I'm saying that here because I'm the pastor here and I see what takes place. We're not the only ministry that, that will allow people to walk into their destiny. But what I'm saying is what I see that have taken place at top of the mountain Christian ministries because I'm the senior pastor. And I've seen it. Not only have I seen it, my wife's seen it as well. Amen. So you have to understand that, that you're in charge of making sure that you take care of you. You're in charge of that. That you can cancel your destiny by the things that you do in your life. So to get a total understanding of this message, what needs to take place? You need to read chapters 13 through 16 of Judges, of the book of Judges. To understand what, what, what is going, what's taking place. The story of Samson's life. Samson's birth in itself was a, a supernatural birth in nature. His mom that and, and dad, they tried to have kids for a long time, but God had to intervene for them to have Samson, to bring forth Samson. It was supernatural. Purpose for Samson to be born. And, and watch this. If you, to understand some of the story, to understand some of the things that, that his mom had to do. His mom said that she wanted a child not only a child, but a male child so bad that she had dedicated. She said, if I have a, a male child, I will dedicate him back to you, God. So she wanted her son so bad. She just wanted to be fulfilled, to, to be able to give birth. And then she said, not only do I want to give birth, but God, when you bless me, when you bless me, when you bless me with this man child, I'm going to give him back to you. How many people have made commitments to God that they did not honor and did not keep? That's true. So she prayed. She prayed, she prayed, she prayed. She prayed. And God gave her a male child. She was so committed to this thing, to presenting that child back to God. Not only back to God, but she said that if you give me that child, I'm going to make him a Nazarite from birth. I'm, I'm going to dedicate him as a Nazarite, an Israelite. <clears throat> and what is that? What is that Nazarite, Pastor Campbell? Uh, is an individual or Israelite that's committed or consecrated to the to the service of God. Under vows, watch this, here's one, to not partake of alcohol. Uh -huh. 
I got you nervous. You got disqualified? Uh, no, you don't. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. That, hey, that disqualified a lot right there, Brother Jeff. <laughs> hey, not to take alcohol? That disqualified you from being a Nazarite. And then number two, they do not cut their hair. A Nazarite is not to cut their hair. And then number three, they are to avoid, to, to avoid defilement. So they are not to touch a dead carcass or anything that's dead. They have, they may not touch those things. This is the story. This is this is the story, and this and the, this is what Samson's mother had committed to to God. And not only did Samson's mother, but Samson accepted this call. He accepted it. He accepted the assignment on his life. So he understood the three commitments that he had. Number one was what? No alcohol. Number two? Don't, cut, don't touch your hair. So you know the story of Samson's strength, man. You know where Samson's strength came from. It came from his hair. He never cut his hair. And God gave him supernatural strength. For being obedient, he got to receive supernatural strength. Can I take a sidebar right there? And in this sidebar, I want, I want to say something to you, and I want to go over something. And the Bible gives us a lot of insight to hair. And I, I asked my wife this question last night, and just to, just to see where her wisdom and insight was on this thing. She said that she see a lot of it uh, in, in the Bible about women's hair, but she don't necessarily see anything about, and then I gave her judges, and she said, oh, you should have said Samson. But it's more things about hair, not necessarily <coughs> your physical hair or my physical hair, but hair, period, that goes throughout Scripture. The Bible talks about hair. And this is, this is a... To me, as I study this, as the Bible talks about hair, it, 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 this is a symbol of character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, got some, we got some noises in here, y'all. <laughs> it, it's a symbol of character. All right, then. I take that Samson's locks of, of his hair was the source of his strength. And I also take from a point of truth that hair represents character than more of, of it representing our strength. It's more of your character than your strength. Mm -hmm. The fact of our strength as believers is not in what we do, but who we are. Can I say that again? As believers, our source of strength is not in what we do, but who we are. Ask yourself, who are you? Or, or the better question is, do you know who you are? Do you understand who you are? That's what your strength is. Not in what kind of job we have, Brother Jeff. Not it, it, or what kind of car we drive. Or what kind of clothes we wear. And we got complimented today on, on the outfits that we have. But that's not our source of strength. Amen. We don't, the clothes don't make us, we make the clothes. That's where our strength is. Our strength is, is that we have to, the kind of character that reflects that kind of character that Christ is. That's the kind of character that we have to have. That's, that, that lives inside of us. The, the spirit of God. This is what I take from Samson's story. What do you take from Samson's story? I also take from the fact that the Bible it, it, it talks about John the Baptist. Let's, let's, look, about, let's look at this in, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. 
It, I don't know about you, but I, I look at Pastor Wendy's face when we talked about the, the camel hair. She's frowning up. But what it told me is that John says that I'm going to be different from everybody else. I frowned up because of the locusts. Oh, the locusts and the, the, the honey. Mm -hmm. But John mm -hmm. says that I'm going to be different. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I'm not going to wear what everybody else wear. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be, I'm going to do something else. Watch this. I take for that to me. <coughs> that God was like for us. As many women of God in Christ. To be different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want his children, his men and his women, his boys and girls. To be like the world. That's right. Our character is not to be conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. Our character has to be different than this world. It has to be different from, from everybody else. Paul wrote, watch this, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul wrote that, that a woman should keep her hair long and, and a man should keep his hair short. And, and watch this, and for my understanding, my, my reading and my study of this, Paul is not necessarily talking about the physical aspect of air here. He is speaking about character. And by him saying a woman's hair should be long and a, a man's hair should be short. He's drawing a distinct difference between the characters. So I should be able to watch this. I should be able to, to, to know a woman when I see a woman. I should be able to know a man when I see a man. I, it should be some distinct difference in character. I shouldn't have to stand there and guess. I think that's a man. I think that's a woman. But what I'm getting out of this is that the character in them should be distinct. And I should be able to tell which one is which. See, we've, we've gotten caught up with the world system and, it, and it, we get confused in it because we don't supposed to be in that system. And, and we want to don't want to cause any harm. I, I, I just want to go by my day. I don't, I don't want to ruffle no feathers. And so I'm going to be okay with what they do. No, it, it has, you have to have a, a, a distinct difference between what the world is and what the men and women of God are. Amen. You have to have that difference in you. So I should be able to look at a man and say, yes, that's the man. And vice versa. Yes. Should be able to look at a woman and say, that, hey, that's a woman as well. By the way they act. Amen. So let, let me put it this way. When you come to my house, when you come to my house, wherever the address is, my house, you know I'm the man of that house. Amen. It's no, no if, ands, or but. I'm the man of that house. If something heavy needs to be moved, I'm going to call somebody to move it. <laughs> I'm going to move it. I ain't going to have her move Amen. And if I do call somebody, I'm still having it done. That's right. <laughs> I don't run to my wife and say, I need this money to pay this bill. I'm in charge of here. But we do share equally in what takes place. But there's no distinct, I mean, there is a distinct difference. You don't come to, I think he's the man of the house. You say, I know he's the man of that house. Amen. Because there's a distinct difference. Amen. So when I'm saying this to understand you, to give you the understanding that there has to be a distinct difference in our lives. Mm -hmm. Samson's strength was in the locks of his hair. So being a Nazarite meant that he wouldn't cut his hair. So I'm not a Nazarite because I'm cutting mine. <laughs> and, and the older I get, the more I got to cut it because there's a distinct difference of where the hairline grows now. And I, want, I don't want to see that. I want to make sure that in contrast you will see that it's 
evening. <laughs> but you know that I'm, I'm the man of that hour. And he didn't cut his hair. And the third point, I gave you one and two already, but the third one was being in Nazarite meant that he would not go near or touch anything dead. Told you not only did his mother make this commitment, that but Samson also as well made the commitment to do this thing. She went to God and dedicated <clears throat> her child to God. And I said Samson was also committed to that purpose for his life. He was committed to. But what was the subject title of this message? Don't disqualify yourself from your destiny. Don't disqualify yourself from your destiny. So not only was he committed, but he disqualified himself from his destiny. Well, you're going to say, as we read this story, as we look over chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, that, that Samson did everything else, but I, I guarantee you, Samson... Caused his life to be short because of some of the things that he did. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? Samson had an assignment and a destiny. But you need to write this down. Not only did Samson have an assignment and a destiny, put your name on. You have an assignment and you have a destiny in your life. He had great purpose. He had great, great, great purpose. And you have great, great purpose. You can, if you go ahead and read the, them chapters I told you, you will see the great exploits that Samson had. Amen. For, watch this, for 20 years, Samson served as a judge. God gave him the power and the ability to rule over, to make decisions for 20 years. And then you can see he, Samson caught 300 foxes, tied them together, lit fire to their tail, and sent them to his enemy's field where they destroyed the field. burnt that field up. And then, then you look at it. He took the jawbone of a donkey and killed thousands of men by himself. Mm -hmm. Great destiny, great exploits that he had. He did this when the enemy tried to tie him down. When they tried to put ropes around his hand, he, he ripped the ropes apart. Great exploits. He did all this with his bare hands. That's when he nobody to help him. Amen. That's the man. That's the man, she said. But the problem is he, he couldn't get his flesh under control. Mm -hmm. Not only was that a problem and an issue and a a, a, a point that uh, a problem for Samson but as we continue to look and examine our life a lot of us can't get our flesh under control so we all, we're going to have a lot of problems and we have a lot of issues because we can't control our flesh so he ended up aborting his destiny You see, my purpose today is to try to stop the descendants of Samson from making the same mistake. In other words, I'm trying to stop you, not necessarily that you that's sitting here, not necessarily you that's watching, but somebody is trying to make the same mistake that Samson made because they can't get their flesh 
under control. And then what they did, what are you going to do is compromise your destiny. I don't want you to compromise your destiny because you can't get your flesh under control. And this is what messed Samson up. All of what God had done for him. We see that he, he lost his life prematurely because he compromised. Samson ended up in the lap of Delilah. Some of you women end up in the lap of David. There's somebody with a D. So we don't want you to follow in those steps. He, he laid up in the lap of a woman that isn't his wife. Somebody other than his wife and it cost him his life. It cost him his life. And it can cost you your career, your job. Samson ended up pouring out to this woman. And she ended up taking the information and cutting his hair. And he lost his life. He lost his strength. And then he ultimately lost his life. Because he listened, listen, listen to me. He talked to the wrong person. And I, I've said this last week. I think we talked about it last week or the week before last. Married people, you can find the wrong people. And it can cost you your relationship with your wife or your husband. People are ending up compromising their lives for a moment of three. That's why some of them like that blueberry heel. They, they feel that they found their thrill. Mm -hmm. But you compromise for a moment of ecstasy. Mm -hmm. When God says, stay away from it. And let me tell you this. Samson did not get into Delilah's lap overnight. That's true. Samson did not get into Delilah's lap overnight. He didn't wake up in an entanglement with Delilah. It happened because over a course of time, he had small, listen to me, he had small compromises mm -hmm. in his life. What we, say, what we say here, a Christian don't have a blowout. They have a slow leak. Mm -hmm. Samson with all these small compromises over his life. Mm -hmm. That was messed him up. A saw small compromise. Right. Let's look at, at, at chapter 16. We see that Samson was attracted to a prostitute and went and slept with her. He had an infidelity, a moment with a woman. And he got his first, listen, his first compromise. Mm. That opened the door. That was found in verse four, in chapter 14. This one incident set the stage for his downfall for the rest of his life. This is the story that I'm telling you. I want you to understand it. Let's look at Judges uh, chapter 14, verse 5, and it said, So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyard of Timnah. Now, to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. Listen to this story. So Samson took his mom and dad with him because he wanted them to tell the woman that he wanted her to be his wife. So what happened was Samson went and he didn't take nothing to his, his mother and to his parents when he got attacked by a young lion. And what Samson did, he killed that lion. And then Samson continued on. 
and went there and to get married to the woman and Samson came back through again and here it is. Remember what, what's the three things I told you to, to, in order to be a Nazarite that there are? You no, could, number one no, was no, what? No, no, no. Number two? No hair. No number no three? Touch no touch of it. No touch of it. So watch this. Samson went through and when he came back Samson seen these bees flying over the carcass of the lion that he already killed. So Samson went over. And Samson liked it. Liked. Okay. Listen to him. He loved hunting. So Samson went over and seen these bees swarming over this carcass. Samson reached inside and grabbed out some honey. Undoubtedly, Samson enjoyed that. And not only did he, he eat, but he gave his mom and dad so. So they could partake as well. So let me tell you something. This is something that you may need to write down. Anytime you have destiny, Anytime you are going anywhere in your life, anytime you are, are set up for purpose, anytime that, that you're going on a journey for God, a lion is going to come and attack you. Something is going to come roaring against you to try to destroy you Something is going to come and try to take you out. Something is going to come and try to defeat you. And in this case, a Samson, it was a young, roaring lion. Listen to me. I'm pleading with you. I'm imploring you to, to be ready. Some will get jacked up because it's going to be a young lion made just the way that you want him to be made. Or let me say it this way. It's going to be a young lady that's looking like you want her to be. The enemy ain't going to send an old lady that's sagging in different places. She still build up. Ladies, the same way for you, they're going to send some man that don't have a six pack in a deep freezer anymore, but the six pack is still there and shown. This is your lion that's going to come to, to try to take you out of your destiny, that's going to come to try to take you out of your purpose. He's going to come up against you. stuff that come up in your life against you. Can I tell you something? You can't defeat this thing in your own strength. Samson couldn't defeat it in his own strength. Samson was supernaturally charged by God with strength. And I'm telling you, you can't do it by yourself either. Can't defeat this lion on your own. That's right. Let's look at Judges verse 6. And it said, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. What did that just say? The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. We need that Spirit of the Lord <laughs> to come on us mightily. We need the Spirit of the Lord to stay there with us. And then it goes on and says, and he tore the lion apart. Did you understand what just took place? It said, the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat. Though he had nothing in his hand, 
but he did not tell his father and mother that he had, what he had done. He killed the lion with his bare hands by himself without any assistance because the Spirit of God came upon him and gave him the power to do supernaturally what he could not do in his own strength and power. Mm -hmm. and what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you got to stay with the Spirit of God. Amen. Because these little things are going to come against you and, and continue to try you and, and can try to move you out of your destiny and out of your purpose. Listen to the story of Samson. Listen to what took place in Samson. <clears throat> Understand the attacks that comes against you because of your purpose and your destiny. Don't disqualify yourself from your destiny. Don't have premature death that take place in your life because you disqualified yourself. The small things that took place in Samson. The small things that, that attacked you in your life. That, that causes you over a period of a time to move further and further and further and further away from God. Amen. Sit down. It, it's this simple. And I'm not talking about anybody that's not here today that's going to watch this over here. But what I'm just saying is, watch this. I miss a Sunday here because I worked too hard last night. You know what I'm saying? I party too hard. And I miss another Sunday. I miss a Monday of Bible study. I, I, I miss the fellowship here. I miss, and you find yourself missing more and more and more. <clears throat> and you don't understand what happened to you. The small things that you allow to creep in to separate you from the love of God. The small things that you that you allow to disqualify you from your destiny. The small things. And here's the one that I, I, I alluded to earlier. When you feel that the pastor has said something to disrespect you. So you allow that to run you away from church. And all alone, the pastor was trying to help you. And the pastor tried to come to you in love. Especially in this house, we don't sugarcoat it. <coughs> Maybe sometimes I don't say it as plain, I mean, as, as salt as I should. But your life is more important to me than sugarcoating anything. Amen. Your life is more important to me than sugarcoating anything. I want to make sure that you don't get disqualified. Amen. And that you don't let the small things, small things, attack you and move you away from your destiny Amen. and what God has for you. I got more of the story that I need to share with you. But because of the time, I want you to go ahead and read Judges chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16. So when you come back in two weeks, I'll have a conclusion of this message for you. Give God some glory. This ain't what I heard, this is what I know. To the top of the mountain, who wanna go? Go with me.